Today we are going to do the question out of the May-June 2022 paper and it's the question on cost accounting, also known as manufacturing, okay? I'm going to show you specifically how to do the direct material cost uh, calculation, how to do the direct labor cost calculation and the factory overhead cost. Uh, cost calculation. And then we are going to complete the abridged statement of comprehensive income and we're going to work through that together. But we're going to go through it slowly. First the direct cost um, of materials, then the direct labor cost, then the factory overhead cost. Before I get into that, I need to explain direct materials, okay, and what constitutes direct materials. So, I'm going to draw a storeroom. When the materials are in the storeroom, they are known as raw materials. Okay, so when you see the word raw materials, it is uh, materials that is not on the factory floor yet. Then, when the materials are moved to the factory floor, they become direct materials. So, raw materials transferred to the factory floor becomes direct materials. That is the factory. Then there are other elements to a manufacturing concern. There's the selling and distribution unit and there's the admin unit. These uh, units also make up the factory. So we first going to calculate our direct materials and then I will get back to direct labor and I'll get back to factory overheads. My apologies. Okay, so let's start with the activity. This activity says and I'm going to go through it very slowly. When I see raw materials, then I must also think of direct materials. Okay. So you can't just look at that part there when they start talking about direct materials and think that that is the only calculation. So during the financial year, the business purchased 12,250 meters of fabric and this was the total cost for the fabric, right? The fabric is still in its raw state and it was secured in the storeroom. So that was still our direct, uh, sorry, our raw materials. Then fabric was issued to the factory. So that then becomes direct materials to meet the production target of 3,000 suits, okay? they're going to make 3,000 suits. What do they need for the suits? They need 3.2 meters of fabric per suit and an allowance of 5%. When they use the word and, it means plus an allowance of 5% for wastage required for the manufacturing of the suit. So let's look at our drawing again. And we're going to now break down this information. So... The raw materials purchased came to a total RAND value of 5,512,500. That was the total of the value of the raw materials purchased. We purchased 12,250 meters. So that's RAND value there. And the bottom, my denominator is meters. What am I trying to work out? I'm trying to work out what my fabric per meter cost, it cost 450 rand. Now, why am I trying to work that out? Because for every suit, I need 3.2 meters, okay, 3.2 meters, and there's an allowance of 5%. So, I also need an extra 5% on that. So, I'm going to say times 105 over 100. So now you're saying to me, Mrs. Moise, why are you timesing it by 105? If I take 3.2 times 5, I'm going to have to plus the 5 to the 3.2 anyway. So the 3.2 is the 100 
and the five is the extra. So I say 100 plus five gives me 105 over 100. What I have is the 100. What I want is the 105. Okay, and then I'm going to times that by 3,000 suits to see how much was actually transferred to the factory floor. Once I have that, I'm going to times that by 450 rand. So let's go through that again. For each suit, I'm going to need 3.2 meters, right? But I'm not only going to need 3.2 meters, I'm going to need 5% more than my 3.2. So I say, okay, times 105 over 100. I'm going to manufacture 3,000 suits and each meter cost me 450 rand. And that is how I'm going to get my answer for my direct materials is going to be 4,536,000. Okay, and that is how I calculate my direct material cost. For those of you who want me to rewrite it in the answer sheet, let me do that for you. Okay, so let's write it in the answer sheet and I'm going to copy it down exactly like this here. Okay, I'm going to say... <clears throat> I need, let me just get that out quickly. I need 3.2 meters per suit, but I'm also allowing for 5% wastage, okay? I'm manufacturing 3,000 suits and each meter cost me 450 rand. So therefore, I've got a total of 4,536,000 thousand which now becomes direct materials so that is what i issued to the factory floor and that is my direct materials there's still some materials in the storeroom okay and that is how you calculate that direct labor direct labor talks about i like to call it touch labor now, both direct materials and direct labor is related to the factory, okay? This is my touch labor, my machinists who make the suits. So, I'm going to go, ignore B for now, let's do C. Direct and indirect labor. So, this is direct and indirect. When I think of direct, it's the people who make the suits, who touch the suits, so they are only the machinists. The supervisor doesn't make the suits. So there are 40 machinists. They earn a basic monthly salary, okay, per month. My production cost statement is for the year. So they earn a basic salary of 9,800 per month, and they earn an annual bonus, but I don't know what the bonus is. So let's work out the basic salary first, okay, besides the bonus. I have 40 machinists, each earning 9,800 rand per month. And because it's per month, I'm going to times it by 12 because there are 12 months in a year. So I have 40 machinists, each earning that per month. And there's 12 months, so my direct basic um, labor is 4,704,000. Okay, 4,704,000. Now, that's basic. Now it comes to the bonus. I'm going to have to read what they say about the bonus. The factory machinists are involved in the production of the suits, so that is my direct labor. The earnings of the supervisors have been recorded as factory overheads. That's right, it should be recorded as factory overheads. Annual bonuses are paid to all employees, direct and indirect. The bonus budget is distributed between the machinists and the supervisors in the ratio five is to two. Okay, so let me explain that calculation before I show you the final answer. So there we go. I have machinists to supervisors 
five is to two. Okay, that's my machinists, that's my supervisors. Five is to two. What does it mean? It means that the full portion is seven. Okay, five plus two is seven. So the machinists get five sevenths of the total bonus and the supervisors get two sevenths of the total bonus. So now I have the 84,000 that the machinists got. So the machinists got 80, not the machinists, sorry, that the supervisors got 84,000. So the supervisors got 84,000. What do I want? I want the five. That's the five is two, two. Okay, so I've got the two, I want the five. I don't have the five. So let me show you how to work that out. I've got 84,000. What do I want? I want the five. What do I have? I have the two. So it's what I want over what I have. I'm going to ignore the seven because it's what I want over what I have. Okay, and so let's just calculate that quickly. 84,000 times 5 divided by 2, and it gives me 210,000. 210,000, and that is my bonus to my machinist. So that amount is going to go in here, 210,000. That's my 5, that's my 2. The 2 added together gives me the full amount, which is the 7. I didn't need the 7. That's why I said 5 over 2. So let's put that amount in. So my bonus, I'm just going to put in. My bonus, I'm just going to say the bonus is 210,000. And listen, you can show your calculation there, because remember, you get part marks for showing your calculation. Oops, there we go. So bonus is that calculation there. Please pause if you don't understand and then reflect on the calculation. Then they say gross wage, okay, is that plus that. Why do I have to calculate the gross wage? Because in my calculation they say All employees pay 1% of their gross earnings or their gross wage or their gross salary to the UIF and the employer contributes. And this is the amount we put in, the contribution, a rand for rand. So if the employees pay 1%, then the employer contributes 1%. So the first thing I want to do is I want to Take my bone, my basic plus my bonus. My basic plus my bonus. Okay. So it's UIF contribution. Okay. And then I'm going to take my basic plus my bonus. That plus that gives me four million nine hundred and fourteen thousand. And I'm going to times that by one percent. And that gives me 49,140. So 49,140 plus 210 plus 4 million 704,000 gives me 4 million 963,140. And that is my direct labor. Basic plus bonus plus UIF contribution. Okay, how did I get the UIF contribution? I took the gross, which is my basic plus my bonus. And that is how I calculated that amount. Now with factory overhead costs, and we're going to do this, I'm going to do it simultaneously, okay, because the activity lays it out in a way that you have to do it simultaneously, but I will work through it slowly with you. So I'm going to work out factory overhead costs, and while I'm doing that, I'm also going to be updating selling and distribution and admin costs. Okay, remember I said to you, the factory is made up of three divisions, the factory itself, 
the selling and distribution, and the admin. And there's certain expenses that you pay for the whole factory, but then you distribute it amongst the three divisions. And we're gonna talk about that in a minute. So let's look at the other information given. Okay, here it says, <clears throat> The bookkeeper previously calculated the following amounts for the current financial year, and these amounts are all given. Okay, so you don't have to do anything with that because these amounts are all given, and I'll show you that in a minute. The bookkeeper omitted. The word omitted is left out, okay, or did not record. Another word for omitted is did not record. And if the bookkeeper did not record it, it means that you must record it. When calculating these amounts, the bookkeeper did not consider these amounts here. So an invoice, an invoice is a plus. Okay, an invoice is a plus for 59,500 for consumable stores was not recorded. The factory used 60% of this and the office used the balance, which is 40%. So that full amount there was not recorded. It was for consumable stores. 60% goes to the factory and 40% goes to the office. So that is why I said to you, I'm going to do this and that simultaneously. The admin is the office. Okay, sales and distribution is the sales unit, the sales division. So I bought an invoice is a plus. I bought and I did not record, but I can't put the whole 59,100 there because I must put the 60% here and I must put the 40% here. So what is 60% of 59,500? 60% is 35,700. So 35,700 goes there. And let me just show you the calculation. That is 59,500 times 60%. Okay, that is that amount there. Then the 40% goes here. And I'm also going to plus it there. And the 40% is 23,800. How did I work that out? I said 59,500 times 40%. So you have to know that an invoice is a plus. It means that I'm buying. So I update that. That plus that must equal the 59,500. Okay. The next one, they say rent paid for the selling and distribution section is 186,000. So the rent for this division is 186,000. Now they're working backwards and they're saying, this is how we divide the rent, the total rent. Four is to three is to one. We've got the three. This is the, the 300 square meters is the 186,000. That is that. I need to work out the 400 square meters and I need to work out the 100 square meters. So learners, how will I work that out? What I want over what I have. Okay, so let's work out the factory first. I have the 186, oops, 186,000. Okay, 186,000 is what? Is the three. I'm gonna simplify it, okay? I'm taking the two noughts away there taking the two noughts away there, and I'm saying the three is the 186. What do I want? I want the four. And then for the admin, I have the 186. I have the three. I want the one. Okay, so that's how I work it out. What I have over what I want. How do I know what I have? They said, the selling and distribution sec section amounts to that. So that is 186. So my rent is 248 here, 248,000 there. Okay, if I calculate it, it's 248. It has to be more than that because I'm timesing it by four. And then for the selling and distribution, 
um, it, for sorry for the admin, it is 62,000, which is basically that divided by three. But what are they saying here? The bookkeeper omitted to record the following. So they did not record the 186, they did not record the 248, and they did not record the 62. Okay, so let's do that quickly. Let's record it. Why am I recording all three? Because they omitted to record all three. So I'm going to plus the 248 there. I'm going to plus the 186, no, sorry, plus the 186 there, because that's the selling and distribution, and I'm going to plus the 62,000 there. Okay, so that plus that plus that amount is the full rent for the year. And then the last one, learners, the factory insurance of 31,500 per month. Remember, my production cost statement is for the year, so I want to look at a whole year's worth of information. The factory um, insurance for of one of oh, sorry of 31,500 per year was paid and correctly recorded. So it's already recorded. But what was the mistake or what wasn't recorded? The premium was increased by eight percent on the first of Jan. The premiums for Jan to March had not been paid or recorded. This one looks very familiar. I saw this in another paper somewhere, okay? So what they are saying is 31,500 that was paid was correctly recorded. Then there was an increase in Jan and Jan, Feb and March was not paid and was not recorded. Our year ends on the 31st of March. Okay, our year ends on the 31st of March. So, all I'm going to do is I'm going to take the 31,500 times 108%. Okay, the 31,5 is the 100 and the 8 is the increase. So it's 108%. Now I'm going to find my answer, 31,5 times 108%. That gives me 34,020. I'm going to times that by Jan, by Feb, and by March for three months. I did not record it, so I'm timesing it by three, and it gives me 102,060. And that is what I'm going to add to factory overheads. Okay, so I'm going to add that to factory overheads. Why only to factory overheads? Because it was the insurance of the factory, a hundred, not the other divisions, 060. So I'm going to say that balance, remember I said that this was recorded, there they got it in, please don't forget to add that. So it's the 941,500 plus uh, the 35,700 plus the 248 plus the 102, which gives me 1,327,260. And there I have my calculations. Can you see it's the same calculations that come up over and over? Now, I need to record or I need to do the statement of comprehensive income. And we haven't seen this in an exam for a while. I have the selling and distribution amount. I have the admin cost amount. So I'm going to add that together because I'm going to get a part mark for adding it together. Okay, and I'm going to add these two together. And I'm going to show that I added because that plus that plus that gives me that. There, I just add these two together, it gives me that. Sales is already, already given. What else? Oh, and then what I can also do is because I can just add these two together and put the amount there, I can calculate my operating expenses and I'm going to get a part mark for that. Learners, don't forget to do your or complete your calculations in order to earn part marks. If at this point you don't know what to do, then just complete what you have to earn the part marks. I, in order to calculate gross profit, I need cost of sales. Okay? 
but how do I calculate the cost of sales? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you to the production cost statement to explain to you how to calculate cost of sales and where the cost of sales comes from. So let's do that quickly. Let's do that quickly. There we go. Okay, so I already have this calculation up. Let me just put on full screen and let me just, sorry, I'm hoping that you can see that. Yes, there we go. Let's make it a bit bigger. Okay, now learners, here you have your production cost statement. There's the amounts that I've just worked out, okay? There's my amount for direct materials. There's my amount for direct labor. I added that just to show the prime costs. There's my amount for factory overhead costs. I simply, you don't have to do it like this. I'm just showing this to you so that you can see where I'm going to get cost of sales from. So I put that into my production cost statement, that in and that in. So these three added together, that's what I'm trying to say. These three added together from 2.1.1, okay, is going to affect that answer. And I want to show you how. So there I have that plus that plus that amount. And it's going to give me 10,826. That is my total manufacturing costs, okay? But I can't calculate my cost of production of finished goods because I don't have work in progress at the beginning of the year and I don't have work in progress at the end of the year. I don't have those amounts, okay? So I am going to look at note four. They say in the activity that 3,000 suits, let me show it to you. Here they say production and sales. Sorry, let me show it to you there. Here they say 3,000 suits were manufactured during the financial year at a cost of 3,750. Where do you put this amount? This amount goes into your production cost statement and it's there. That is the cost of production of finished goods. This year that they are giving there is the cost of production of finished goods. Okay, of finished goods. That is the bottom line of your production cost statement. So there you can work out that amount. That amount, because they give you the three, uh, 3,000 times the 3,750. Always remember that when they tell you how many items were manufactured, it is this amount. Okay. Now, this amount I'm going to transfer here because it's the cost of production of finished goods. There it goes into note number four. Now, I've got my opening balance for finished goods. Remember they gave it to you here? Here they gave you the finished goods. There's your opening balance and there's your closing balance. So I'm going to put that in first. Then I'm going to put in my cost of production of finished goods and then I'm going to put in my closing balance. So let me show you then what goes onto your answer sheet. In this answer sheet, how do you work out cost of sales? Oh, sorry, let me show you this. Finished goods opening stock plus cost of production of finished goods minus finished goods closing stock gives me cost of finished goods sold, which sold, which is cost of sales. So that is how you calculate cost of sales. I'll say it again. You take your opening stock finished goods. You take your cost of production of finished goods and you take your closing balance of finished goods and that gives you cost of sales of 11,315,000. That minus that, okay, sales minus cost of sales gives you 6,000,000. 789,000, then gross profit minus operating expenses, 
gross profit minus operating expenses gives you net profit for the year. And there we go. Let me just show you again so that you can reflect on this. In order to calculate cost of sales, I take opening stock finished goods plus cost of production of finished goods minus closing stock finished goods. If I had work in progress, then I could have taken total manufacturing costs plus work in progress minus work in progress to give me that. Then I can put that over there. OK, so please learners, you have to know the format of your production cost statement, even if they're not going to ask for it. So thank you so much. I just want to put this up again so that you can have a look at it and you can reflect on your answers. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed this time with you.